Hi everyone, Tom Moffat here. Say so step one of your personal financial plan is to determine your current financial situation. You're to complete a personal balance sheet, a personal cash flow statement, which is also called an income and expense statement, and a personal budget. So let's look at examples of each of those three documents. The document that's available to you, the first part, uh, is a financial documents and records. You're welcome to complete that, but it's not required, although it is a good idea uh, to have some record of where you all, all your in, important financial documents and records are located. It's pretty easy for those things to get lost, and uh, since we don't use much, many of them on a regular basis, uh, sometimes we don't remember where they're at, so it's a good idea to jot down where those are located, although it's not required. Uh, the personal balance sheet. A balance sheet is simply a record of your assets, your liabilities, uh, to determine your net worth. The thing, one of the things to remember about a balance sheet, it is for a, peer, a point in time. For example, as of July 31st or as of uh, December 31st, so a point in time. In our example here, we're going to use as of July 31st. Let's look at some of the things you'll include. Assets. To begin with, well, what is an asset? Uh, it's simply an economic resource that you control or possess. It is not necessarily what you own. It's only economic resources that you control or possess. So let's look at some of those. Liquid assets, meaning those things that you can convert to cash readily, uh, very easily. Uh, so you have a checking account balance of 1450 in this example you may have uh, some uh, money market funds uh, or savings and that's valued at 5250 so you have a cash value on your life insurance policy that if you need to convert your life insurance policy to cash uh, you could do so and it has a $3700 balance and maybe you have some cash on hand, meaning $100 in cash tucked away somewhere in case you have an urgent need uh, that you didn't plan on. Let's say it's $100 there. So your total liquid assets then is going to be $10,500. Assets and possessions is another category in your balance sheet. Let's say the current market value of your home might be $180,000 if you're a homeowner. Uh, if the market value of your automobile say 8,000, you have some furniture worth 6,000, you have some equipment in your home worth 4,000, unless if you're an antique collector, perhaps you have uh, some antiques worth about 2,200. Uh, if you have a boat, maybe the market value of your boat is 1,100. So altogether, those total household assets would be uh, 211,300. Another category is investment assets. Well, if you have a savings certificate, for example, of $500, maybe you don't have stocks and bonds at this point, so there's nothing there. Uh, you have an individual on a retirement account, an IRA, that has a $5,000 value. Uh, then you have some mutual funds that you've invested in, $12,000. And so you have total investment assets of $17,500. That brings your total assets to a total of 239300 Well, let's look at what you owe, your liabilities. You have a charge account, some credit card balances. It has a $3,300 balance that you have to pay. Does that mean you're going to pay it off right away? But eventually, when you do pay it off, at this point in time, it has a $3,300 balance. You have a, a car loan uh, for $1,800. Uh, if you have any other liabilities, you you might put those uh, there. Current liabilities, I should say, meaning those uh, uh, commitments that you have to pay within a year. So you have a long-term liabilities, meaning those things you have to pay for in more than a year. Uh, your home mortgage, if you're a homeowner, is 175000 You have a student loan, perhaps, a $1,200 balance on that. So your long-term liabilities is one seventy six. 200. So your total liabilities is 181,300. So the difference between your assets and your liabilities 
is your net worth. In this case, you have more assets than liabilities, so you have a positive net worth of $58,000. So if you got, if you turned all your assets into cash, paid off everything that you owe, you'd have $58,000 uh, uh, left over. Obviously, you're not going to do that right away, so but that's what that, that shows you. I should also say that these balances will change on an ongoing basis. So the next time you do a balance sheet, some of these things will have changed. Maybe many of them will have changed, which is fine. You would expect that. You're not going to do a balance sheet every month probably, but you might do one you know, once every six months or maybe even once a year. And when you do, you'll see these balances change. But this is just kind of where we start uh, with our personal financial plan. Let's look at the second document, the personal cash flow statement or record of income and expenses. The difference here is that a, a cash flow statement is a, a record for a period of time, not a point in time like the balance sheet, but a period of time, one month, one quarter, semi-annually, or maybe for one year. In our example, we're going to use an income statement or a cash flow statement, a record of income and expenses for the month of July, and we're actually going to do that at the end of the month, ending on July 31st. So if we look back at what our revenue was or what our income was, we had $1,700 in salary. We had an extra $100 in some kind of miscellaneous income that we did some work for someone that we made $100. And let's say we have interest on our savings of $50. So our cash inflows are it would be $1,850, $1,850 for the month of July. Let's look at fixed expenses. We have some expenses that are going to be the same every month, month in and month out, with very little, if any, change. Those are going to be called fixed expenses. The second category is going to be variable expenses. These we expect to change, you know, from month to month, uh, so they're going to vary. Our fixed expenses become our mortgage, because we do have a mortgage. So it's, let's say we pay $800 a mortgage and in our example we're assuming that your taxes and insurance are escrowed meaning they're a part of uh, your mortgage payment if they are not then you would put those uh, in a category down here called insurance and then you might have another category called taxes uh, that you would may not pay those every month but you put them in an account every month and so you commit those resources uh, so that at the end of the year, when you do have to pay your taxes and insurance, you have the money available. So, and there's the, on your student loan, perhaps you pay $200 a month on your student loan. So your total fixed outflows would be $1,000 or your total fixed expenses. Let's look at variable expenses, those that change regularly. And uh, these may be different for you, but this is just an example. But let's say for food, I spent 250 in July. Clothes, I spent 50. Electricity, 50. Telephone, 100. Water, I spent 25. Let's say I had some education expenses. I bought some school supplies, and that was $20. Uh, personal care, uh, haircut, uh, toothpaste, you know, whatever. Uh, personal care items for $25. I had a, uh, a prescription I had to fill, or maybe I had to make a trip to the doctor. Medical expenses would be $50. Uh, recreation and entertainment. I went to the movies, maybe, and there's $10 I spent for that. I bought a friend a gift for $10, and maybe I had some donations to charities for $120. So my total variable expenses for the month of July would have been $710. So total, fixed plus variable, my total expenses for the month of July, $1,710. So if I look back up at my income, $1,850, and I subtract my expenses, $1,710, I actually had a surplus. I had more income than expenses, which is a good thing, uh, of $140. So the next thing I have to decide is what am I going to do with $140? Well, I'm going to put $100 of it into an emergency savings fund. We'll talk more about emergency funds later on. But uh, and I'm also going to put uh, $40 towards some financial goal uh, that I have. Maybe I'd like to buy some stocks and bonds somewhere down the road. So I'm going to allocate $40 of that surplus uh, to that financial goal. And so my total allocation surplus is $140.
So I've actually accounted for all the access of uh, income over expenses. Now, obviously, sometimes, you know, the expenses might be more uh, than income. And if that's the case, there is no surplus. There's no need to allocate uh, surplus. So let's look at a budget, the third financial document. Uh, budget is simply a plan, your plan for spending and savings based on your expected income. Uh, in our example here, uh, the budgeted amount is really the only column that you have to be concerned with for step one. You're welcome to fill in the actual amount if you have those records available to you, uh, but not required. You actually get to actual amounts uh, in step six. So let's concern ourselves at this point with uh, budgeted amount, and our budget is for uh, a month. So in this case, I had I put the July 31st date in there. So every month, this is what my budget looks like. So I had a salary of 1,700. I budgeted uh, an extra hundred in some kind of other income. So I expect to have income of $1,800 every month on a regular basis. So I'm going to have that $800 mortgage. I'm going to have the $200 loan payment. Those are fixed expenses or outflows. So my total fixed expenses are $1,000. Now, emergency fund, okay. So if I'm gonna have a surplus every month of about $140, I'm gonna allocate $100 to that emergency fund and I'm gonna allocate or budget $40 to my financial goal. So my total uh, allocation then of savings is $140. So let's look at the variable expenses. There's my 250 in food, uh, that'll vary. Uh, maybe from month to month, but generally I'm going to average about $250 a month in food. My utilities are going to average about $175. I'm planning to spend about $50 a month on clothes. I don't really have any additional transportation costs, so I don't put anything there for a budget. I'm probably going to spend about $25 a month in personal care. I can expect uh, $50 a month in medical costs. Uh, entertainment. $10 a month sounds reasonable, so every month I'm going to uh, go to the movies. Uh, education, uh, my educational supplies, since I'm in school, probably going to average about $20 a month. Uh, I'm going to plan to give uh, in gifts and donations $130 a month, and then just in case I forgot something, uh, I'm going to allocate $20 to a miscellaneous category. So my total variable is 730, so my total expenses for my budget, my plan is to spend $1,730 every month. And if I look back up here, uh, I plan to have an income of 1800 So every month I'm thinking that I'm budgeting a $70 surplus. So we'll see how that, that works out. But that's my plan going forward. And then uh, going forward also, I can go back, uh, say, at the end of, of August, and I can look and see what my actual expenses were and see how they compared to my budgeted amounts so that I may need to take a look and see if I have to uh, make some changes to my budget. Well, uh, that's examples of those three documents, and if you have any questions, please let me know.